Hi everyone, my name is Yusi Wu Yan and I'm a professor, associate professor of economics from the University of Tulsa in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the United States. My co-author is Professor Eric Thorbecker. He has been a mentor of mine since my days as a PhD student at Cornell. So <clears throat> our paper is uh, really just to, to explore the poverty growth dynamics. Um, so uh, there is a vast empirical literature exploring the link from poverty, uh, from growth to poverty reduction. I mean, depending on the regression uh, analysis frameworks adopted, we have at least two strands of sub, sub strands of literature exploring the empirical links from uh, growth to poverty reduction. So adopting a regression framework, most notably Dollar Tree 2002, and they have an update in 2016 where they explored a number of world economies and then they found out that the uh, income of the poor grows at the same rate as the overall average income in countries studied, you know, from uh, in two studies covering two different time periods. The most recent follow-up covered all the way from uh, 1990s all the way to 2016. Now, in that uh, strand of literature, they regress poverty reduction rate on economic growth rate and a number of other initial conditions and control variables deemed relevant for uh, poverty reduction. Another strand of literature is, uh, Professor Tarp mentioned, the analytical framework based on the identity model. Uh, first, way back to uh, Dat and Revalian in 1992, Kakwani in 1993, and then popularized by Professor Boogie Nyon in 2003, where he proposed an analytical identity where poverty reduction is due to a change in uh, mean income and also a change in distribution, the so-called identity approach. Now, following using that approach, we also have a lot of literature, mainly by Professor Basu. Uh, excuse me, Basu is my professor. Basu and some others, where both of the two strands of literature, despite of the different approaches they used, they came to the conclusion that uh, economic growth is of central importance in terms of, in words of the dollar and create, is of central importance for poverty reduction. Now, however, uh, uh, two things. So, abundant literature on the link from growth to poverty reduction, but we do not have as many, nearly as many empirical or research on the reversal link from poverty reduction to economic growth. We have some conceptual work way back in 2006, World Bank Perry and his co-authors, and then Professor Nisanki and Thorbeck uh, under the auspices of uh, UNU Wider had a number of studies also trying to, you know, explore the reversal link from poverty reduction to income growth, where you can imagine a number of channels through which high initial poverty and slow poverty reduction rate might hinder or dull subsequent economic growth. Empirical wise, we have some more recent literature, Lopez and Seven and Professor Ravalli, and also the book by Professor uh, McKay and Tarp, which you just mentioned, the 16 countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, 75% of the population, where, uh, you know, they uh, painted a more nuanced picture and then highlighted that growth remains important, but then we might also have um, uh, a, a potential where uh, growth is not always effective in reducing poverty. And then on the other hand, you know, uh, poverty reduction could be significant in some of the countries, even though the economic growth is not significant. So uh, more recently, Professor Thorbeck and I, and also Dr. Shumelis, who, you know, is not able to be here today, we co-authored a couple paper also trying to uh, explore the reversal link from poverty and poverty reduction to economic growth. Now, as I already mentioned, these studies suggested a more nuanced growth poverty dynamic that asks for more exploration and more empirical studies. So the research questions that we have had in this one research are the following. First of all, we want to ask, does poverty, we look at both the initial level of poverty and also poverty reduction rate, we wonder, does poverty affect growth? Do we have empirical evidence? We have had some, not many, not much, and we also could conceptually imagine poverty having an impact on subsequent growth. But then do we have empirical evidence? That's question number one, where we adopted this model, which is actually really based on the identity uh, uh, approach, where you have uh, poverty reduction rate as a function uh, of uh, income growth rate. And then you have uh, 
uh, initial, uh, oh, this is a typo, income growth rate, the change in inequality, uh, interacting with initial inequality, and also interacting with initial relative income. And then also related to the change in uh, inequality and its interaction terms with initial level of inequality and also initial relative income. So uh, this is the model that we adopted for this one research, being aware of its uh, limitations. The second question we are uh, asking is the, really the abundant literature is already supporting, but we want to just to make sure. So does faster economic growth bring about faster poverty reduction? So we look at both from income growth to poverty reduction and also from poverty reduction and initial poverty to income growth. Finally, we compare these results between sub-Saharan African countries and also the entire developing world as a whole to see if there is a difference in terms of the poverty growth dynamics in Africa versus in the entire developing world as a whole. So, the data we have to rely on, the only international comparison has to come from the World Bank. So they have some 1,600 unique country year observations from the surveys that they conducted in different sub-periods between 1981 and 2018. These are panel data. However, they are highly unbalanced, so much so that they, does not, they, they do not allow us to run really panel regression. You know, we tried fixed effects, we tried dynamic generalized method of moments, and the results are highly sensitive to even just a little tweak of the data code, or to even just a little bit change of specification. So we, end of the day, we had to resort to, despite of being aware of the peril of cross-sectional analysis, we had to resort to a cross-sectional analysis where we reduced the highly unbalanced World Bank panel data into a cross-sectional data consisting of 129 what we call less developed countries or developing countries, including 14, 44 in sub-Saharan Africa from the same period of 1981 to 2008. Now, each country obviously has only one growth spell and one spell during which poverty reduces, which is consisting of the very first survey year and the very last one, we look at the annual average rates. This is a compromise because of data limitation, and we very much look forward to, you know, learn about potential fixes of the thing. Now, I'll skip all these two because I, I'm aware I only have uh, 15 minutes. This is uh, the entire sample, which we call OLLA sample, including 129 countries from the developing world, including 44 from sub-Saharan Africa. The average growth spell is 21 years for the entire sample, even though we have some countries which are, you know, having much longer or much shorter growth spell. And for sub-Saharan Africa, the growth spell is roughly 18 years. Now, we also, because of how we choose our regression procedure, we also have a so-called GMM sample where we ran, you know, generalized method of moments regressions, uh, which calls for not just two, but three uh, time periods. You need, you know, the very first and the very last, and then the middle one. The middle survey year and the final survey year will make our growth and reduction, poverty reduction spell, but then, you know, the, 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 the middle one will be uh, IV instrumented by the uh, the very first year, so that's how you have generalized method of moment, allow me to jump, is really just, uh, you know, it, it essentially this is just a standard IV estimator. The, the thing is, it allows, it improves the efficiency of a standard IV when you have the presence of heteroscedicity of unknown form. So that's uh, the two regression procedures we have uh, we have used for this analysis. I mean, it's really limited by the data that we have in hand. And of course, cross-sectional analysis really does not allow for any, you know, satisfactory causal identification. And I'm looking forward to suggestions for improvement. And also Professor Tarp, in the beginning, his analysis of the analytical framework and its limitations already gave me some, some ideas. Now, the findings here are, first of all, I mean, uh, th those are extremely small, I, I apologize, but then the idea here is, we do find some empirical evidence suggesting that faster poverty reduction does lead to faster subsequent growth. 
for the entire developing world, but especially in Sub-Saharan Africa. So faster poverty reduction, the impact on growth in Sub-Saharan Africa is roughly, you know, uh, twice of the impact of poverty reduction on growth in the entire developing world as a whole. So this is confirmed with some empirical analysis, despite of all the limitations. Now, the second finding here is we looked at not only the impact of poverty reduction rate on subsequent growth rate, we also look at the initial level of poverty on uh, growth and we find that high initial poverty weakens the effectiveness of growth in reducing poverty. Uh, so that is consistent with what had, had already been found in previous literature. So we are able to confirm. So the first two findings are basically answering our questions about the link from poverty to growth. For one, high initial poverty weakens the effectiveness of growth in reducing poverty. For another, faster poverty reduction rate to begin with has a positive impact on subsequent growth, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. The third finding is really just to confirm what we have already learned. We have a little bit of an interesting nuance. So in general, we have been able to confirm that faster economic growth does bring about faster poverty reduction. However, it's not so much in sub-Saharan Africa. So in the developing world as a whole, yes, indeed, we have faster growth leads to faster poverty reduction. However, in sub-Saharan Africa, poverty reduction is not responding to growth as much, perhaps related to what Professor Tarp just mentioned. Some people, you know, they improved, but they still do not cross the line. So. Uh, here we have only presented OLS results, but uh, GMM estimates are consistent and it was uh, omitted for parsimony. Now the last finding is we are able to, because we used the identity model, so we are able to estimate the effectiveness of growth in reducing poverty, considering the initial con conditions in terms of initial relative income and also initial uh, GINI. We are able to estimate the growth elasticities of, uh, uh, for poverty reduction, where we noticed that the growth elasticity for the entire developing world as a whole during the studied period is roughly two, whereas it's only half, I mean 1.14 in sub-Saharan Africa, again confirming what we have already, you know, uh, found out in, in the previous uh, finding, I mean confirming that. So the implications therefore is, uh, so for one, I mean, I will be short. The implication is we probably should also focus on poverty reduction in the first place. By attacking poverty in the first place, we might be able to uh, improve subsequent growth, which would in turn, you know, further reduce poverty more effectively. And therefore, you have a virtuous circle or spiral take holds. And that's the title of the article. Uh, that's uh, all we have. Thank you so much. I hope I stay within the time limit. <laughs>